you can just see the filth that is on these dressers. Again, not complaining, just stating the fact that I definitely need to clean these. I might even clean them twice. Welcome back to Furniture Flipping Teacher. I'm Lauren and welcome back to day five of the 12 days of Flipmas. I can't believe we've already done four flips in one month. Absolutely crazy, but here we go. We've got another for you and actually it's gonna be two in one video. So lucky you. I got this set last year a while back and we actually got it for free from one of our local followers who reached out. They were moving and they were like, hey, we have this furniture. It is in rough shape, but we'll give it to you for free. Just come check it out. So we did and luckily they had some people there that helped us move it um, into the truck because this stuff is so heavy. And like I said, it needs a lot of work. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Let's stop wasting time. I'm going to remove the hardware. So while I'm removing the hardware, I'm going to go ahead and label the drawers and take them out so I can clean them all nice because they're very dirty. And I like to label them so that way the drawers go back into the right spot. So this is the right drawer number one. all the drawers out. The one unfortunate thing, but I can't complain too much because again, the set was free, um, is that the bottom drawer on the taller dresser is missing one of the pieces of hardware. And it's like a one or one and a half inch hardware. Um, the holes are that far apart and that's a really difficult uh, size to find. So I'm still in search of that, but we are gonna go ahead and move on to some cleaning. I'm gonna be cleaning with some white lightning, which I've got already dissolved here in my spray bottle. And this is by Dixie Bell. It's like a TSP soap cleaner, and it's gonna get all of that grease and dirt that's on these off of these. I mean, you can just see the filth that is on these dressers. Again, not complaining, just stating the fact that I definitely need to clean these. I might even clean them twice. Yeah, that's why we clean you guys that is really gross and just imagine if you were to just jump right in and start painting all of this stuff would um, prevent the paint from adhering really well to the surface so number one step clean your furniture or else you're gonna have a, a failing paint finish <laughs> enough dirty talk <laughs> Um, it is time to move on. We are going to start designing. So there are a couple of areas um, on the dressers that have peeling veneer and most of it is around the edges. Right here is what I'm talking about. So this is gonna have to be wood filled and painted over, but I'm gonna try and save a lot of the wood on these dressers. And we're gonna sort of do a two-tone look um, throughout both dressers. So for that two-tone look on the drawers, I'm gonna do two colors. And it's really nice, while I was removing the hardware, I found that in the back of the drawer, the front plates can also be removed. All I've gotta do is take my screwdriver and grab these four screws and then this front plate will pop off, which is perfect because I'm gonna do the front plate a different color than the sort of trim edging, which also kind of the back plate. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that now. My plans might be ruined. <laughs> it might not be that easy. 
possibly try and pry it off, but only if it's easy. Darn it. My plan is foiled because this plate is glued. Dang it. Well, I guess we can skip that step. It's time to get out a new to me product that I've been seeing all over the internet and it is a stripper. So I'm gonna be stripping back some of this wood finish and this is called QCS by Stripwell. This is a non-toxic, completely no VOCs and it's a finish remover. So you can do this inside, outside. You don't need to wear gloves. You don't need to wear any sort of respiration. So I'm really excited to give this a try because you guys know me in the past, I have absolutely hated any sort of stripper. It just makes a huge mess and it's very toxic. You have to kill all the toxicity with mineral spirits and then it stinks and so on and so forth. So I'm excited to put this to the test. Like I said, I've seen a lot of people use it and be really happy with the results. So let's give it a try. So with the strip well, all you do is take the spray bottle and then spray down a pretty liberal amount on the areas that you want to strip back. Now I'm not gonna be leaving the top raw wood, I don't think, because there's a little bit of damage over here, but I do still wanna strip it all back just because a lot of the finish is already off and there's like paint here. So we're really putting this stuff to the test. Um, and then I'll also move on to the drawers as well. So I got the first layer of everywhere uh, covered up with the Stripwell QCS. And so I'm going to let that just sit on there for about 15 minutes. This is a little bit different than normal stripper. You don't need to put any like saran wrap or anything on there and it's not hot out so that helps me as well uh, we're just gonna hopefully let it do its thing and then we'll come back here soon and we'll see if it is ready to be scraped off so waited about 15 minutes and then the directions say to spray them again so i sprayed them again and so then i waited another 30 minutes so now we're going to try to see if we can get some of this scraped off. Again, on the tops, I'm not really looking to get it completely off. I just wanna really even it out and get all of the paint, little paint colors that don't belong on here at all. Um, so I'm gonna just go ahead, take my scraper and start to go across. You wanna be careful with the metal scraper so that you don't like dent your um, veneer or the top of your dresser at all or you could use a plastic scraper as well. You just kind of want to go pretty lightly. Definitely getting some of that finish off. And then with this, again, there's nothing that we need to stop any chemical reactions with. So I can just take a paper towel here and wipe it back. It's not a furniture flip without being frustrated, right? Definitely a little bit frustrated. Um, I think I haven't done enough research on how to use the QCS. So I went ahead and wiped it all off. Um, it sort of worked on the top of this one and that one, but on the drawers, it's like not working at all. It's a little bit cold out. I would say like maybe 40 degrees or less. So I need to check and see if like temperature matters because I know for paint it does. So I'm gonna do a little, a little bit more research tonight. As you can see, it's dark out. So um, although it really is only about five o'clock. So I'm gonna do some research tonight. We'll be back tomorrow. I'll update you guys on everything that is going on as well as my plan going forward for this project. Just wanna say, I'm not knocking the product because I've seen so many creators um, and flippers use the QCS on their furniture and they've gotten excellent results. I'm blaming it on me, it's a user error, so hopefully tomorrow we can change things up. All right, I've done some research over the night 
It's the next day and I figured out why this isn't working quite right on this specific piece. So I checked out their YouTube channel and they've got a lot of FAQ videos that that's very informational. And I, I looked at the ones before I started of just like how to use it in general, but I didn't go deeper. And so last night I went a little deeper and it says that the reason why the QCS may not be working on your specific piece is because it might be from the wrong time period. What QCS really focuses on is the before 1960s pieces because the finishes were a lot less durable back then. And so because this is not a chemical stripper, it's going to be able to eat away at those less durable finishes. But now since the newer furniture is more durable, it's a little bit less likely to go through those finishes. So I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to save it for another project. Hopefully in this 12 days of Flipmas, I will be able to find an antique piece or a piece that's older than the 60s so that I can try this out again. But I'm going to go ahead and grab my sander and get this finished off old school style. almost done sanding. I'm done at least with the stripping part of the sanding. So I got all of the finish off of everywhere where I want it to be raw wood, but I still need to go ahead and scuff sand everywhere. So that includes basically the all that I have left are the sides of each dresser and like the front trim everywhere because I'm going to be painting that, but it still has some paint chips. So I don't want any of those bumps. So I'm going to go ahead and sand those out and then we'll be ready to prep for paint. since everything is now scuff sanded, we are going to make some repairs. And like I said earlier, there's just a lot of this side um, edge banding on the tops that's missing or cracked. So I'm just going to be taking some wood filler, filling that in, and then we will come back and sand it all smooth once it is dry. All right, now that we've got all that wood filler on there, it needs to dry for a while. I like to choose the, the kind that's pink and then it'll turn a natural color um, as it dries. So that way you just know exactly when it's dry. So between the drying time, I am going to grab some painter's tape and then tape off the areas on the drawer where I do not want to get any paint and then we will come back and sand these smooth and then we will prime. So like I said, I'm going to be taping off the areas that I do not want to be painted. And so around the drawers, that's going to be the trim pieces. I'm going to paint the sort of elevated parts black. And then also I want to leave the middle portion, the raw wood as well. I'm going to figure out later how to match the woods because they're not matching right now. Um, but I'm thinking I'm going to stain them or something and then we'll try and get the correct color. But this painter's tape, it's going to be a little bit of a tedious job, but sometimes it's go big or go home. 
Okay, got everything taped off here. So next I am going to grab my paint. And the reason I didn't tape off here in the middle of the drawers is because um, I am a little nervous about getting like exact precise lines. So what I'm thinking is I'll just paint it, be careful around the edges, and then I'll take my sander, come back, take away the paint that I maybe got on a little too far. So like I said, I'm going to prime first because there's a lot of um, exposed wood where I'm going to be painting black. Um, I want to go ahead and prime it just to seal all of that exposed wood. That way no bleed through comes through and um, everything is just like a nice even surface. So I'll start with the drawers and then by then the wood filler should be dry. Wood filler is dry now, so I am going to go ahead and sand it down. That way I can prime this. This corner over here is still a little squishy, so we're gonna let that uh, sit for just a little longer till it hardens all the way. But over here is dry, so I'm gonna sand it. I'm just using a 220 with my surf prep. Uh, that way we don't go too low or too crazy. So I ended up having to reapply some of the wood filler. So while that's drying, I'm gonna uh, go ahead and prime the parts that didn't need the extra wood filler, which would be the sides of this dresser and the smaller dresser. And then hopefully by that time, all the wood filler will be dry. We can sand that down so I can prime the tops as well. Also, I'm just using Dixie Belle's Boss to prime. And this is a stain blocking, but water-based primer. So it's not gonna let any of that Stain pop through. Alrighty, it is time to get some black paint on these guys. So I'm gonna be using Dixie Bell's Silk Paint in their Anchor color, which is their black for this line. It has a primer built in, but it's a more of a bonding primer. So that's why I went ahead and did the boss just to make sure that no stains come through. And then just to also even out all of the surfacing. And then it also has a top coat built in, so I don't have to top coat it later. So before I paint it, I want to grab my fine sanding pad here, and we're just going to lightly sand just to get any possible dust that may have landed in there. Just we want to just smooth it out as, much, as best as possible. All right, I am ready for the second coat on the drawers while the dresser's first coat dries. And so what I'm gonna do is the exact same process that I did um, with the primer. I am going to take my very fine sanding pad and just smooth everything out. A lot of the times there's possibilities where like dust and debris can land on the wet paint and then it kind of sticks to it. No big deal, you just smooth it out. Not really looking to take away any of the paint. And then you'll just go ahead and wipe back that dust so that it doesn't get in your second coat. This paint also has really great self-leveling properties. As long as you're in the right temperature and it's not drying too quickly, it really levels out awesomely. So it's super smooth, um, which is something that you really want so that it doesn't look like you've brushed on the paint, but it just more looks like a smooth, smooth finish. All right, it is time to focus on the legs because that first coat on the actual bodies of the dresser is still drying. So before I do that second coat, I figured it's a good time to go ahead and strip these down just like I did on most of the drawers. So I'm gonna be using my surf prep again and I am gonna be using a medium grit and it's just a little foam pad. So there's different millimeters of the pads, the foam pads. So this one is a thinner one, but it still allows you to go um, in, it allows you to get around curves because it still does have that foam. So like I said, I'm just gonna go ahead and strip these back. And then on four of them, we have some little gold caps. We're just gonna remove them completely and um, 
because well for one some of them are cracking off and then for two the other four don't have them so i want the all the dressers to match so we're just gonna go no gold caps and just do some raw wood right so that is what they're gonna look like which is more like the middle of the drawers so this will probably stain a little bit like that and i'm gonna just go ahead and do the rest of these kind of took a while but it's worth it because the finish is definitely failing on these eight legs later we've got some bare legs they are raw wood now so I will stain those the same color as the rest of the wood. I'm gonna head over and do the second coat on the bodies and then we'll be, yeah. I don't know why I gotta keep talking. we are on the home stretch here i just figured out our hardware situation i ended up ordering some that i think is going to work i will get to that once it arrives but i'm going to go ahead and take off this tape here and then like i told you earlier i'm going to try and keep this middle part here wood so i'm going to just take my sander and sort of sand around here and get that excess paint off of there are sanded I know I still do need to go up and or go back and like just refine the lines really well but first I'm gonna go ahead and stain everything and then I'll come back with a fine brush all right we've got Lily Moon's Tennessee whiskey smoky gel stains I like using this because it's a very um, neutral brown color and this has the top coat built in so that means I won't have to go back and do a top coat just like I don't have to on the black paint either so I'm just gonna put a little bit here on my rag and then just wipe it on and then wipe any excess off and make the lines a bit more crisp. But I think overall the look is good. All right, so now that all of the other drawers are stained, I also need to match these drawers with that stain color so that it's all a simple and cohesive look. This, these drawers are just completely wood, so I don't have to worry about taping off anything or getting it on any other surfaces. And like I said, this is super easy to apply. I just go ahead and put some on the surface and then I take a lint-free cloth and basically just rub it in. You'll wanna have a little bit more than you actually need. That way you can wipe it back to your liking. All right, all that staining is done. So we are going to go ahead and put the legs back on these two dressers and get those drawers back in. is back together I'm liking how they look there's just a couple of things that I'm noticing that I've just not completely sold on and that is the designs here in the middle one it's very difficult to get them the precise lines that are super crisp that I would really like and then two I think just because of the different wood grain um, and the different colorings I just really think that it makes the dresser look um, 
less attractive than it could be. So I think my decision is to go ahead and paint these black as well and that way everything will just be more more slick and simple and then we'll put some gold hardware on there um, if you remember in the beginning of the video we are missing one of the bottom poles and so i searched and searched on amazon couldn't find anything they're like seven eighths of an inch center to center so it's like unheard of so i found one that i think is going to work that i'll just be doing a screw in the middle and then the hardware pole will actually cover it up. So all of that will be gold. Um, that's on order, so it's gonna come in a couple of days. So we'll finish this video here in just a couple of days. We'll see you in a couple seconds. The hardware came yesterday. So it is these black, um, they're basically knobs. Like I said, they just have one hole. So I will have to do some new holes in the dresser, but that's okay. Now is the time though that I'm going to be matching all of the hardware together. So I'm going to be spraying it with vintage gold. So this is pretty much the brand and type of hardware or uh, hardware paint that I always go for. Um, this is Rust-Oleum and I've really just had great luck with it. And they have tons of different colors. This was the gold that I found that I thought would work best on these two pieces. So I'm just gonna do a light coat to start with. You don't wanna go too crazy because then it will cause drips and it will not dry very quickly. So it's better to do the more, the coats that are less and then do more of them to not cause the drippage. Okay, so gonna let that dry for a bit and we'll come back to do some more light coats. Now that the hardware's had a chance to dry, we are going to be able to reassemble it and put it all back together. Up top, we are using the original poles that came on the dresser because they were all there. And then on the bottom, I'll show you what we are going to be using. Well, you guys probably saw them when I was spray painting them, but I will show you exactly how I'm gonna have to attach them. The poles that I found had one hole. Again, I couldn't find these, uh, this size of hardware. So what I'm gonna do is drill one hole right directly in the middle of these holes and then the hardware, hardware will cover these two holes. Not the most ideal, but if because I wanted to keep these drawers wood and I didn't want to bother with trying to match any wood filler, I am choosing to do it this way instead. That looks pretty good. I'm definitely satisfied with that because of what we had to work with. You're great success. got the two finished pieces. Sometimes you do have to be agile with furniture, be flexible, and when things don't go as planned, you've got to pivot and think of something else that could help you get to the end goal. Because ultimately, that's what we're here for, is the end goal. So if, for instance, on these pieces, at first, that strip well stripper didn't work out. But again, I don't wanna discredit that product because I am excited to use it on a piece that it's actually made for, so stay tuned for that. But at first that didn't work out, so I just was flexible and took my sander to it. The second thing was the hardware. I wasn't able to find replacements that exactly fit into that lower hardware, but here we are and I think that those ones that I finally found really worked and it all came together in the end. If you guys remember what we started with in the beginning, they were absolutely trash. They were filthy 
they were, they just had stuff all over them. Who even knows what it was? But coming from that trash that we got for free and to this, I think that it's a pretty awesome transformation. And it really didn't cost too much either. Because we got the pieces for free, that was a great investment up front. And then I paid $20 for the six knobs. And then all of the paint I had on hand, so I had bought it for previous projects. But let's just say I used around $30 to $40 in materials, so mostly paint. Uh, since I didn't have to top coat these ones since I used all built-in top coats. Also, that includes the spray paint that I used on the handles to make them all cohesive. So we're in around $60, let's give it. And so I am planning on posting these on Marketplace for around $700. The mid-century modern furniture is very in style right now. Um, I tried to keep it pretty neutral toned, so that's why I went with the black with the brown, and then the gold is very trendy right now. So I think that we'll be able to get a pretty nice profit off of these once they sell over on Facebook Marketplace. That's where I list all of my furniture. So that concludes it for day five of the 12 days of Flipmas. I cannot wait for day six, you guys. You are going to absolutely love it so if you're not already be sure and get subscribed because we've got seven more projects for you guys and then after that we'll be back to furniture flips as well Woo! thank you guys so much for watching we'll see you on the flip side